Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the JavaScript fetch API so you can make fetch requests to your favorite APIs. We are going to be using the Unsplash API along with the cat API for demonstration purposes. And this is some of the stuff that we're going to be doing. We're going to allow the user to search for something and we're going to make a fetch request. And we're also going to show you how to do it without ha actually having to search for anything. For instance, here, I made a fetch request to the cat API, which returned this data here. And these are just a bunch of cat images that we can use to build an application. For instance, I built this application using the Unsplash API demo. And as you can see, I made a search for monsters and I was able to return all of these cool images. So this is the kind of stuff that you can be building once you learn how to use the JavaScript fetch API. So that's why it's really important to learn it. And not only that, it's actually very easy. So let's get into this tutorial. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing that I'm going to do, you don't have to copy this, is just output how to use the fetch API. All right, so we're going to be accessing two different APIs. The first one is going to require some information from the user. So let's go ahead and create an input. And let's give this an ID name of user input. All right, and of course, we want them to be able to submit that information with a button. So let's create a button. And let's give this an ID name of search. And don't forget to include this script here that is going to link your JavaScript file. So if you have not created a JavaScript file, go ahead and create it. All right. So now what we want to do is get access to that button so we can allow the user to submit their information. So let's do query selector and then we gave this button an ID name of search, and then we're going to add an event listener. So when the user clicks on that button, we're going to call on this function. So what do we want to happen? Well, first let's grab whatever the user inputted. So let's do document query selector user input. So this is going to get access to the input and it's going to grab whatever the user typed in. And what we want to do with that is we want to pass it on to this function called request. So let's pass in the user input. And I'm not sure why I created this. You don't need that. Go ahead and delete that. And now let's go ahead and create this function that we called request. Pass it in the user input. And this is where we're going to make our fetch call. All right, the first thing we're going to add is a variable called URL. And this URL is the endpoint to the API. Now, every API is different. So the URL is going to be different from API to API. The way that you go about getting this URL is you have to look through the documentation of the particular API. So we're going to be working on this in a moment. We are going to be using two different APIs so you can see how I go about doing this. All right, so once you have the URL, you're going to make a fetch request to the URL and to access the information that we got from this fetch request, we're going to use promises. So the first thing you have to do is include dot then, and this is where the response is coming in. Now, two things can happen. Either we're going to get an error and this is where, what we're going to do. If we do get an error, we're going to do not response. Okay. So this means that there was an error. In this case, we want to throw an error. So we're going to do response.status text. So this is going to return the error that we got. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that in a moment. But if there wasn't an error, then we're going to do response.json. All right. So if there is not an error, we're going to do dot then data. And let's go ahead and just console log the data. Now, typically you don't want to just console log it. You want to output the information onto the screen or whatever you want to do with the information. In this case, I'm just going to output it as a console log so you can see the information that gets returned when we make this fetch call to our API. All right. Now, if there is an error, you want to catch the error and in this case, we're just going to do a console log of the error. 
And once again, you typically do not want to just console log the error because you want to let the user know the reason why there was an error. Otherwise, they're not going to know what happened if you're just doing a console log. All right, so let me go over this again quickly so you can understand this. So first, we're going to create a URL that is going to have the endpoint to our API. Now we're going to make a fetch request to it. We're going to grab the response. And if there's an error, then we're going to go directly to here. So we're not going to even do this if there's an error. We're going to go directly down here and we're going to output the error that is coming in from this here. But if there isn't an error, then we're not going to do this or this. We're going to go directly to here and we're going to output the data. All right. Now let's go ahead and build this URL. So the first thing we want to do is open up our browser. And the first API that we're going to use is the Unsplash API. So go ahead and create an account. They're going to give you an API key. Please make sure to keep that a secret. I'm going to be revealing it here for tutorial purposes. All right, so once you're here, you're going to click on view the documentation. And I'm going to click search photos by keyword. All right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And in here, they have an example of what they did. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. And this is how you go about finding endpoints to these different APIs, because sometimes it's not so clear cut as to how to go about it. Sometimes you have to find and figure it out. You have to actually make Google searches for this kind of stuff, unfortunately. <laughs> so for this one wasn't so bad. I'm just going to show you to paste it in there. Now for this particular endpoint, what they're doing is they're looking for images about offices. That's why it says office here. Now we don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And also the quotes, we're going to replace those with back ticks. All right. And in here, we're going to add the money symbol and brackets, and we're going to type in user input value. So this is the user input that we're grabbing from the user that is coming in through here. But we have to add one more thing, and that's going to be the API key. So to include it, you have to type in client underscore ID equals and the API key. All right. So we're all good to go. Let's go into our HTML file and right click and open with live server. All right. So this is what we have. Let's go ahead and see what we have in the console. Let's do shift control J to open that up. And all right, so I'm going to make a search for planets and I'm going to click search. And as you can see, we have a response with the data. So if we click on it and then click on results, we see that we have 10 results. And this is the first one. Let's click it. And we have all of this information that we can use to build an application. If we go to URLs here, you'll see that there's a lot of different URLs for an image, which you can use to build your project. So I'm going to go ahead and search for it. And as you can see, this is the image that got returned. And all of these are different images to different planets. All right. So this is one example. Let me show you a different example that does not require search. So let's go back to our code and, and I'm going to change this function up a little bit. We do not need the user input anymore because we're going to be making a fetch request to something that does not require that we are going to be replacing this. So let's go ahead and delete this. And now let's look at the cat API. All right. So let's go over to the documentation. And they have a couple of different endpoints here. Let's go ahead and search this one here. So this one is going to return 10 random images. So if we paste that in here, we can just call this function directly because we do not need user input. So as soon as we run this project, it's going to make a request to that API. And as you can see, it already went ahead and did that. So it returned 10 images. If we click on the first one, we can see that it has a URL. So if we copy that and paste it up here, click search, we'll see that this is one of the images that it returned. All right. So this is how you go about making fetch request using the fetch API that is included 
with your JavaScript. And you can literally use this code over and over and over again. The only thing that you have to change is the URL because every API is a little bit different. That's going to be it for this video. Please make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.